to be taking you through the facilitation for FAC 2601 and FAC 2602. Um, yeah, so in a nutshell, just a little bit of introduction about myself. My name is Gordon, a uh, chartered accountant. I've worked in many companies in Standard Bank, Corporate Investment Banking, and at um, Deloitte, and, and currently consulting for um, a number of uh, companies. Um, yeah, studied at VITS, and now yeah, I've been lecturing since, I've been lecturing for financial accounting, management accounting since 2014, and yeah, so that is a little bit of history about myself. Good. So today we're going to be looking at um, at FAC 2601 and FAC 2602. How how are we going to be able to um, to be able to pass this this subject? I think that's the main objective for this particular um, um, facilitation session. So we're going to learn how how what is objective of this um, um, course? What what does the curriculum entail, and what and what is the outcome? What is what is the outcome? So my main aim is for you to be able to to make it easy for for everyone who is taking FAC two six zero one and FAC two six zero two to be able to 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 pass to pass. Right. So I'm 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 here to facilitate that. Uh, my job is not to go into into, into too much uh, detail about the, um, the regarding the course content, but it's more about the exam technique and also the overview, you know, and the, the overview, the exam technique to help you guys to be able to 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 help you to study properly and also to help you to be able to pass this subject successfully. Good. Yeah, so we're going to uh, look at the course objective, then we're going to look at the curriculum, and we're going to look at the outcome. For, uh, yeah, so uh, from now on, it's going to be a series of, 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 of lectures on exam technique and to help you to be able to make this course very easy and for you to be able to, to pass a strong when you study, it becomes very, very easy. Good. So the first thing that we will tackle, so we're going to be today, we're going to be tackling uh, three things. We're going to look at the course objective, the the curriculum, what does curriculum entail, and then the outcome. What do we want to get out of this uh, facilitation section? Good. The first one we'll talk about the course objective. Why why do we study accounting? I think that it is very very important that before um, you even um, decide to tackle this course in the first place, you should know what accounting entails. You should know what you are getting yourself um, uh, um, um, uh, into. What is accounting? What does accounting do for us? Because some people, some many people have taken the, uh, 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 this course, like myself, I was still, uh, one, one time I was in a position, I've taken the, the course, everyone is talking about accounting, and I've, 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 I've taken it, but what, what would accounting do for me? What what will accounting? Where will it lead me? Will it is it is it a, is it something that is profitable? Is it not profitable? What qualities do I need to have for me to be able to excel at accounting? So we're going to look at the basic form of what an overview of what accounting is all about, and then some very two or three fundamental keys that I think is very very important uh, that. Uh, everyone studying accounting should be able to know in order for them to be able to to move forward. Without that basic understanding, it becomes very difficult. You will learn, and then you wouldn't know. It is very important that you know the end, where you are getting yourself into, you know, for you to be able to discipline yourself and, and stay stay motivated. So it's very important that you understand the overview of what accounting is all about, and. The reason why we do this facilitation is that I'm not going to assume that everybody knows. No, it's, it, it doesn't work like that. People, some people may not know. So it's very, very important that we go through this step by step. And it, so today is an introductory lecture. And as, 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 as we move on during the course of the of the weeks, you know, your things will, will become clearer. 
at any point in time, I'll ask you questions. I'm, I'm also expecting you guys to also to ask me as many questions as possible. Just stop me or raise your hand or chip in or whatever, you know, so that we'll be able to have um, a dialogue, a, 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 a question and answer session, a dialogue as we, we move along. Good. So I'll start by saying, what is accounting? So I say accounting is the process of recording, summarizing, analyzing, and reporting financial transactions of a business. Does that make sense? Does everyone agree with this definition? Accounting is a process of recording, summarizing, analyzing, and reporting financial transactions of a business. That is all what accounting is about. Any questions? So what do I, so by this definition, I'll underline um, three important um, words here. Process of recording. So as an accountant, I need to be, what, to be able to record transactions. So that is what, I, what, I, what an accountant does. An account, accountant record transactions. And from the transaction that it records, it's, it's in, it, it, it then summarizes these transactions. And once it has summarized the transactions, then it can analyze them and also what? report. The reporting is when we, we prepare the financial statement and statement of profit and loss and statement of changes in equity. So, the chase, so what you see, the, the, the balance sheet uh, or the statement of financial position, statement of, of profit and loss and the statement of changes in equity are the reporting aspect of transaction. So that is after the recording has been done, after the summarizing has been done, and after, and then after the summarizing has been done, then we then we, we can report. And once we report, we can also be able to, to analyze the the the, the, um, the, uh, the the financials for it to be able to, to give meaning. Because when you see a set of financial st statements as they are, if you do, if you are not able to analyze it, if you are not able to be able to uh, to, uh, to analyze it, to look at what it tells you, it, it then it then it, it loses it, its meaning. If someone gives a sort of financial um, a, a, a statement, how do you how do you be how are you gonna be able to understand it? The only way you're gonna be able to understand it is when is when you analyze it, analyze it. So that's all what accounting is about. So those of you who have taken up FAC 2601 and FAC 2602, what this course is about is that you are going to be recording transactions, you are going to be summarizing transactions, and you are going to be what? To be reporting on them in a form of an income statement, a balance sheet, and a statement of change in equity, or, equity, or in, in this case now we call it uh, statement of financial position, statement of profit and loss, and statement of change in equity, and of course, cash flows as well. So, so that's what we, that is what you, you are in to do. That is what you are, you are in, in to do. And then I've said here that it involves tracking financial activities. So you track the financial activities. So whatever transaction that has happened in your business, in a company, you track it, you record it, you track it, you record it. Then you prepare your financial statements, and after preparing your financial statement, you interpret the financial statements. Then you are able what, to give meaning to what the financial statement is saying. If you are not able to interpret it, it doesn't, then some, you, someone may not be able to understand it. Someone may not be able to understand it. So as you go into this particular um, um, uh, course, bear in mind that there's only three things you are, you are going to be doing. You're going to be recording transactions, you are going to be summarizing transactions, and you are going to be reporting transactions. You are going to be reporting transactions. And you will see why this recording, summarizing, and, and, and reporting are very, very important um, for, for a business. Very, very important for a business. What are the benefits of studying accounting? What do you think are the benefits of studying accounting? Remember, what we are doing is what an introduction before we get into the curriculum and then we will, we will now discuss how to, to study it and, and pass it and, 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 and be able for it to make sense and for you to benefit from it. Yeah. 
What do you think are the benefits of studying studying accounting? We've, so we, we looked at the fact that accounting is what? It's about recording transactions, summarizing transactions, and reporting on, on these uh, on, on, on the transactions. And then you analyze it for it to what? To, to bring some meaning. You analyze it to bring a meaning, you know, for it to make sense. So now what do you think are the benefits of studying accounting? So I want to is that what it gives what financial knowledge? Yeah. Yes, it gives financial um, and knowledge because accounting is the is the language of business, right? So uh, one of, of the benefits of study in accounting is that you are able to understand, you are able to un to, to understand financials. Very good. Very good. Uh, Epilene, you want to give us one benefit of why I'm studying accounting? I was also going to say the same thing, but um, it's to also understand like the way the finances goes in the businesses and also as an individual to understand your financial position. Good. Excellent, guys. All, your, all the answers you've given are just perfect, right on the spot. Yeah, so those are some, some of the benefits of actually studying accounting. Those are the benefits of studying um, I, I accounting. So I've got here leadership and strategic thinking. Leadership. So one of the benefits of studying accounting is what? Leadership and strategic thinking. When account studying accounting enables you to be able to think strategically, right? If you are the managing director of a business and you look at your a set of your financial uh, statements, you will be able to know exactly where your company is going. You'll be able to know where exactly where the, 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 the company is going. Is it making profits? Is it making losses? Um, in terms of the the, the the balance sheet, do we have enough assets? Does our, our assets exceed our liabilities? Uh, if you look at, at the cash flow statement, are we making enough money or we don't have any money in our bank account? So these decisions enables the leaders or management to be able to make strategic decisions. What are some of the strategic decisions? Like, do I need to borrow uh, money because now I don't have cash? Or do I now uh, sort of... Uh, um, um, uh, um, buy some shares in, in another company to bring to bring me a, a money. My assets are exceeding my li liability. Do I need to um, now what um, sell or or settle some of my liabilities? What do I need to do? So looking at your accounting information, you are able to make strategic decision. Do I do I need to lay off workers because I'm not I'm not going to be able to pay salaries? or not? Uh, do I need to go onto the market more aggressively to be able to earn more revenue or not? So these, these decisions are all what strategic, strategic decisions. That helps me to be able to, to make informed uh, 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 decisions. If you are a leader and you are not making, or you are a business owner and you cannot make strategic decisions, then you, your business will collapse. So this is what the, one of the reasons why we study accounting. The next one is varied responsibility and scale development. When you have an accounting knowledge, the skill that you acquire in, uh, through accounting makes you very versatile, that you can be able to apply this knowledge in any business environment or in any um, organization. It is a very, very good skill. The third is ca career progression and advancement. Every, if you are skilled in, in accounting, you can progress. You can really progress in the, in the workplace. Because why? Because people need accountants. Every business needs accountants. These days, all the time you hear people say, I'm going to open my own business. I'm going to open my own business. You cannot open your own, uh, uh, whenever you open your own business, you need accountants. You need people to be able to tell you the story. How is your business performing? Am I making profit? Am I making losses? Can you must I liquidate? Must I carry on? So every business will need what an accountant for for them to be able to to, to give them information. Not every entrepreneur 
is is a financial uh, it is financial literate so we come in as accountants for them to be able to help them with what to analyze their their, their business um, uh, for them and that is why we are very very important in any um, or that's why your career progresses as you move along in accounting financial management expertise is very very important you you are able to what to have knowledge in financial management you are able to forecast you are able to budget and these techniques are very very important if you cannot budget and you cannot forecast you may not your your company may not be able to go in the right direction so it's very very important so that is what the financial management can expertise being able to analyze um, um, uh, financial looking at analysis looking at trend looking at break even point and all those things these are very valuable techniques that every business will will, will want you know um, uh, that that someone should be in the business to to help them to analyze some of these things job stability very very um, uh, um, uh, important i mean these days a lot of people go out of businesses uh, or uh, are retrained but if an if an accountant i think the likelihood of you even if you get retrained you will still get a get a job because what your your values or, or i mean your expertise is very very valuable is valuable so an, an an accountant and also very versatile as well you're always in demand. It's always in, in demand. The other thing is competitive compensation. Because you are valuable, your salary also you also earn a decent amount of, of salary. Whether you are an, a general accountant, whether you are a CA, whether you are in audit or in taxation or in any branch of accounting, you earn a very decent compensation. Critical thinking and problem solving. The skills you acquire as an accountant helps you to be able to solve problems. It helps you to be able to solve problems. Your, your managing director comes and tells you that, you know what, guy, I need, I want to know whether I'm going to make profit, I'm going to make a loss or, or what. You will develop certain skills that is going to be able to tell tell him or her whether you are going to be able to, to the company will move forward or not. Global opportunities. I mean, the, when you prepare financial statements, the standards, the IF, IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standard that we use, uh, they are very um, versatile. If you go to any most of, 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 of the companies or most of the countries in the, in the world, they use the same standard. It's the same standard. So I can move up here, I can leave South Africa, go and work in the UK, in the Netherlands, in Germany and I will be able to perform because the standards to prepare financial statements are the same, are the same. It is one standard. Then entrepreneurial pursuit. For those who want to uh, pursue their, their, their own businesses, having knowledge of accounting gives you the skills, you know, and, 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 and their skills for you to be able to, 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 to understand business because accounting is the language of business, right? Yeah. So in a nutshell, that is that is what those are. Those are the very the, the the critical benefits of studying accounting. Yeah. So you are actually in the right. Um, <laughs> you are you you are you you are in this. Uh, 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 you are step in the right direction, right? That, that's what they say. A step in the right direction. You are in the right direction. If you want to attain any of these benefits, you are in the right place. All you need to do is to be able to now to discipline yourself and learn more and find out how will I be able to, to qualify as an accountant or be an accountant for me to be able to, to get all these benefits that have been uh, outlined. Good. Now, what skills do I need to be able to excel in accounting? What skills do I need in order to be able to excel in accounting? What kind of person do I need to be, or what skill do I? Because remember, you want you are saying accountant because you want to be what an accountant. You want to qualify as an accountant. You you will. You, it is very important for you to know what attributes. What are the skills that I need so that if I don't have that skills, 
then I'll start work, working on those skills. Because if you don't have that skills, then it is very important that you start work, working on, 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 on those skills so that um, the accounting um, studies and your accounting profession um, becomes easy, becomes easy. So what, what skill do you think um, an accountant requires or what qualities do you think an accountant re requires for them to be able to, to perform well as an accountant? A, a skill, a quality, a characteristics? What do you think? You just mention me one, one characteristics or one skill that you think an, an accountant should have for them to be able to, to be an accountant? I think that accountants need to have um, Sorry, come, uh, come again. I think that accountants need to have analytical skills. Analytical skills. Excellent. Analytical skills. An accountant needs to have analytical skills to be able to analyze things, right? That is excellent. To be able to have analytical skills, to be able to analyze things, to look at things and be able to look at trends and to be able to go have an in-depth understanding of what that uh, uh, that thing is, is, is telling you. Analytical, to be able to analyze things. Yes, that is one, one main quality of an accountant. Very good. Excellent. What other, what other quality do you think an accountant needs to have? Analytical skills, is, it's tops, like tops, but what are, what are the skills? you think an accountant needs to have? They need to be um, honest in all of their financial reporting. So they need to uphold integrity in all that they do. Okay, so you said they need to be to be honest, right? Is that is that what you said? You said on honesty. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So ethical values. Excellent. They need to have ethical values. Because when you prepare a financial statement, you shouldn't lie, right? You should tell the story as it is, right? So you need to be able to be ethical. You need to be able to have, to, to have, possess honesty. Very, very good. Excellent. Which other one? One more, then, then, then we move on. Which other one? And anal you've mentioned analytical, excellent. You've also mentioned ethical values, excellent. Which other one? I mean, you, you can look at yourself. I mean, I'm sure the mere fact that you decided to, to, to do accounting means that you actually possess some accounting characteristics. What do you have? <laughs> what do you have? One last one, then we move on. Um, understanding the basics of accounting. Understand the basics of accounting. Good. Understand the basics of accounting. Yeah, that's also a skill. It's a skill. So this particular skill is not a skill that is inborn, right? It's a skill that you actually acquire. You acquire. Good. Excellent, guys. Excellent. Yeah. So I've got uh, certain things li lined up. And, 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 and the, the reason why these, these are very, very important is that, and to highlight them is that if you don't have them, then you must start developing them because they are very important to the success of your, whether passing your exams and also even practicing as an accountant. It's very, 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 very important. So if you don't have them, then you must develop them. You must develop them. There's a whole lot of, uh, you can go on the internet and say, okay, how do I, how do I um, uh, have time management skills? It will give you, you know, what you must do, you know, for you to be able to, to be able to manage time uh, pro properly. So I've got at least the attention to detail, very, very important. An accountant, you need to be able to uh, to have a precise data recording. When you, you purchase property plans and equipment for a hundred thousand, 
and you, you, you cannot say it is 110,000. No, you must be able to, you to record things as they are, be precise. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important. So you must be able to, to have, have what? Attention to detail. Very, very important. Every job interview that they, they ask for, the one of the strengths that um, they will all, always, the interviewer will always want you to mention as an accountant is what? You have attention to detail. Someone who has an attention to detail doesn't make silly mistakes. I know we all human, we do make mistakes, but it is it is a very valuable characteristic to have what? Attention to detail. So now accountants should be able to what? To record um, numbers precisely as they are. Mm -hmm. Attention to detail. So don't just, those people just, you know, they, they don't care, they just or a scribble or something, no. They look at things, they analyze them properly, and they write exactly how it is. The other skill is analytical skills, which I think uh, you, you mentioned already. The ability to interpret financial information and identify trends, very, very uh, important, because once you have prepared a financial um, uh, statement, you have summarized it, you need to be able to what? To analyze it. So if you don't have that analytical ability, it may be difficult for you to be able to excel. It's difficult for you to be able to excel. So it's very important that you have an analytical skill. Mathematical proficiency. Mathematic, I mean, I don't think you even you even register to do this course if you don't have some form of uh, mathematical proficiency. So you don't need to be a math, mathematics guru, but when it comes to arithmetic, you should be able to what to add and subtract. <laughs> that is very, very important. You know, so have some mathematical proficiency, very, very important. Communication skills. As an accountant, you're always communicating, whether you are communicating um, um, verbally or you are communicating uh, um, uh, through what written communication. Each, each way, information is noise if you are not able to communicate it correctly. Mm -hmm. So if you have the financial uh, information in, in front of you, if you cannot communicate it correctly, then you will not win. If you cannot communicate it correctly, you will not be able to convey um, your message to, to, to somebody else for them to be able to understand. So good communication skills, very important. Then problem solving skills. You need to be able to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so and, and naturally, you know, people who, who solve problems are, tend to be very good, good accountants. You know, they, they, they are, because they're able to analyze things, they are able to come up with solutions. Um, and these days, um, I also wrote software proficiency. These days, when you, when you go to, to, a, to a job, everything is computerized. Uh, we are automating a whole lot of things. So an accountant should be able to be your tax savvy, be able to have a software proficiency, very, very important, you know, uh, to be able to, to know Excel, you know, to, to know Excel to the advanced level, to be able to know ERP uh, system like SAP, SysPro, Pastel. All these things are things that, these are the tools that an accountant uh, uses. So an accountant is expected to have um, computer software knowledge. Then adaptability. You know that today there is international financial reporting standard 12. The next year there's another one, financial account or after three or four years, it changes. Because the environment, the world is changing. So our financial, uh, our financial standards that helps us to prepare financial statements are also changing. So it is very important for us to be, uh, to be adaptable. We need to be able to adapt. We need to be able to adapt to, very, to to scenarios. So when things change and your your managing director comes and say, I things have changed, so I want to read you to adapt a different uh, standard. Or maybe now we are using the SAP as our system. And then now we decide we're going to use a SysPro, you know, as the software. You, you have to be adaptable because things change and we expect accountants to be adaptable. Time management, very, very important. When you are, if information is always useful when you're able to report them on time. So whenever you see that accountants are always under time pressure, you know, you need to meet deadlines. So you have to have a way of managing your time properly. You know, when, some, when something is due at seven, 
you don't wait until seven o'clock you start preparing. You know, you make sure you prepare it what way in advance. And it also happens in your studies as well. When you have a test or an exam or an assessment that is due on the 27th of, of May, you don't wait until from the uh, until you start uh, writing the assignment on the 26th. No, you will be late, you know, because things happen, life happens, and you may not be able to finish on time. So an accountant is supposed to have time management skills that you should be able to make sure that what well, things happen on time. Very, very important. Then teamwork. You know, you cannot be an island. You always work with people. So be someone who, can, who is able to work in a team. Very, very important skill. Then, of course, the last one, very important, ethical or honesty. Very important. An accountant, because you are preparing the financial statement from which decisions are going to be based, it is important that you are ethical. Very, very important. And you see that all these things I've mentioned, they will come up in your studies. They will come up in how, how even you apply it yourself. And whether you will be able to be successful or not depends on, on how you have been able to, to develop these skills. Some of them come naturally. Some, they won't come naturally, but you need to develop them as you, as you go along. As you go along. Okay. Um, so right now, so what we are doing so far is what? We are trying to get what? The overview. So that you understand, you understand. So that whenever you get down to do your work, whenever you get down to do exercises, to do assessment, to do assignment, once you have the bigger picture, it helps you to be able to know what you what what you you are about. You cannot delve into a course or a program without really understanding what it entails or what what is the end goal. You know, so that brings us to the, our next slide. What is the pe what purpose does financial statement serve? I'm going to be preparing financial statement. I'm going to be studying. I'm starting at FAC 2601, FAC 2602. What purpose does financial statement serve? What is the end goal? If I don't know the end goal, I may I may not even be, 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 be motivated. But if I know the end goal, if I know what I'm doing, if I know the, my importance, why am I in this company? What is my importance? There are other people who are doing other things in the in the company. There's a procurement, there is sales, there is this, there is HR. What as an accountant, what 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 is my purpose? Why am I there? And I believe that it is very, very important so that always when you wake up in the morning to go to work, shoulder high, knowing that I'm contributing something so precious and so powerful. And that should be able to motivate you as you study. Your, your accountancy um, um, uh, or, or uh, as you study, so always have it at the back of your mind that this is what I am I am producing. You know, this is what I am I'm producing. So what is the purpose? What purpose does financial statement serve? If I prepare financial statement, so I'm going to be preparing financial statement. I'm, I'm recording transactions. I am uh, summarizing transactions then I end up preparing financial statements. What is the purpose? Why? For what? To what end? Why am I doing this? I think, I think the purpose of financial statement is, is to see how the company, company um, um, the company, how should I put it, perform during the year. Good, excellent. How the company has performed during the year how the company has performed during the year. Excellent, excellent. How the company has performed during the year. What purpose does financial statements serve? How the company has performed. And, 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 and why do we think, why do you think we need that, we need that information? We can run a business or a company without knowing our financial uh, things. Because when we run a business, we want, the purpose of a business is having um, our finances that are good or not. Because mostly with accounting, if I'm not mistaken, it's something uh, that is like we're using accounting to see uh, the future. Hence, I'm saying using uh, accounting is the purpose of um, having like financial stability for the future purposes, I think so. Yeah, 
It's right. It's right. Excellent. Excellent. You couldn't have put it at, at a, a more appropriate way. Just excellent. So that is the reason. Purpose. To what end? All that we are studying. This that we decided to study the, the um, accountancy and become an, an accountant. At the end of the day, all that I'm, I'm what the service or my important why I am being paid so much money is because I am producing valuable information for the company to be able to run. Remember, accounting is the language of business. Well, if you cannot, if an entrepreneur or someone cannot be able to interpret financial statement, they will be lost. They will be lost. Accounting is the language of business, and, and, that, is, and that is a fact. So uh, the financial statement tells us where we are going, how far we have come. Are we doing well? Are we, are we not doing well? What can be changed? So initially we said what? It makes us to be able to, uh, to think strategically so that when I have that set of financial information in front of me, I'm able to think strategically as to what am I going to do next? As, as a managing director or as a CEO or as management, how, what am I going to do next? Am I doing well? Am I doing um, bad? Am I, I am, are my stakeholders happy? You know, are, are they happy? Will the banks be able to give me a loan? You know, will my creditors um, look at the, the financial statement and think that they, that, that they can be able to give me the, the goods that I need and that I'll be able, I'll, I'll be able to pay them? Um, uh, uh, you know, so uh, will SaaS be able to tax me? You know, so I, I need so so you perform such valuable uh, um, a tax for for, for 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 a company that your job, your profession is just it, it's 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 so important. It's very very important. Every decision that has to be taken. Every financial decision will come, have to come from, like, from a, a set of financial statements. Without that, will, if I need a loan to be able to expand it, the banks will ask for my financial statements. Why would the banks ask for my financial statement? The banks want to know from the financial statement, they want to know whether this company will be able to pay me my interest if they come for the loan. Do they have enough cash? The creditors want to know that if I... If I loan them my goods, would they be able to pay me? Even the employees who want to know that will this company be able to continue paying my salaries? Do they have enough money? Are they making losses? Are they making profits? You know, is this company going to be liquidated? SaaS wants to know, are the assets less than the liabilities or liabilities are, are less than the, the, the assets or, or more? Is this company in a good standing? Do they have so much loans that they don't even have assets anymore? You know, so it tells us a whole lot. And that is why it, we, are, we are learning accounting for us to be able to develop that skill that helps us to be able to not just only to prepare it, but also to be able to analyze it, to give us what, and uh, to, to tell us a, a story, you know? Just seeing a sort of financial statement may not be able to, to say much to you, but be able to analyze it, you know, it's, it's very, very important. And that is why we are studying this. And that is why your job is so important that they cannot do without you. That's why they pay you well. <laughs> okay, good. Guys, thank you. So, yeah, so decision making, they provide essential information for to make informed decisions, which I've already explained that. Performance evaluation, assess the performance over a period, allowing for comparison. So when I prepare financial statement, I'm supposed to prepare financial statement for this year and also be able to show what happened last year and the previous two years as, as well. We call them comparatives. That helps me to be able to compare how my business has been doing for the past two or three years. How have we been performing? Are we going down? Are we going up? You know, it helps me to be able to make strategic decision. Strategic plan and provide areas of strength and weaknesses. So the financial statement tells me a lot. Um, to, it, it will tell me areas that I, I need improvement, areas that do not need improvement that are fine, you know? So based on the financial statement, it, it, and, and when I analyze it, it should be able to tell me a whole lot of things that I, I need. Tax compliance. 
um, in any country, you, you need to, in South Africa, you need to comply with, 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 with tax. It is, it is part of our law. So, and the law says that a company must prepare financial statements, you know, so that they will be able to know how to tax you. So, if you are not preparing financial statements, it means that what? You are not complying with, with the law of South Africa and you are going to be fined. And the company can be liquidated because the fines can be so much that you may not even be able to pay. You know, so also you are you are com complying with with tax. So these are some. So this is are some of the, uh, the importance of of, of of this. Then my last thing that I want you to know before we get into the into the curriculum and and, and why the curriculum has been set up like this is that um, I don't know whether you guys have heard of IFRX and I IAS. What are they? Has anyone heard of IFRS, IFRS, and IAS? What are they? What do they stand for? It's not it's International, international financial, financial Reporting Statement or System. Standards. International Standard. Financial Reporting Standard. Good, excellent. What are they? So the IFRS stands for International Financial Reporting Standards. What about the IAS? It stands for uh, International Accounting Standards. Good. So IFRS is International Financial Reporting Standards and IAS is International Accounting Standards. What is the difference between the two? In the rest of your program or in the rest of this, this model, you are going to be learning a lot of IFRS and IAS. You are going to know them like the back of your hand. <laughs> so you must know what what is the difference between the two okay all right so international financial reporting standards so the, the old one was called the IIAS international accounting standards so this was the the standards that was issued by the international accounting standard committee so basically when we prepare financial statements we we just don't we, it's it's the way we prepare is that we we go by a certain standard you know and that standard is the same like like i said most of the countries of, of this world so if i go to germany if i go to the uk if i go to netherlands if I, wherever i go the accounting standards are the same so it's just a framework which guides me to be able to prepare financial statements so these ias are now um, going uh, going away to be replaced by IFRS, International Financial Reporting uh, 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 Standards. So you will realize that right now, the, all the ones that are coming up are all called IFRS, International Financial Account, um, International Financial Reporting Standard 16, International Financial Reporting Standard um, 15, 16, International Financial Reporting Standard 9. So all the, the olden days, they were, for example, the standard that governs how we record revenue it used to be called IAS 18, but now it is called international, it's called IFRS 15. You know, so the IAS are the old, the old standards. It is being replaced by IFRS, right? But we haven't replaced all of them. So right now you will still see IAS and you will still see IFRS. Yeah, but in general, it's all what? They are just standards that helps us to be able to what to record uh, or, or to be able to prepare financial statements in high school when you were i don't know i never studied accounting at high school but i, I don't know how um, high school accounting was but maybe when you were preparing financial statement you were just you 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 just prepare financial statement based on the um, you look at revenue you look at cost of sales and then you prepare financial statement at varsity level Every line item on the balance sheet or the income statement, there is a standard for it that helps us. So it means that we are no longer in high school. We are now at tertiary level. We are at varsity. We need to be able to. We, we now go into detail to tell us exactly how to how to be able to what to record to recognize revenue. That revenue that you see on the income statement, there is a standard that is about. A thousand, two thousand pages that tells you how 
to actually um, recognize that, 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 that number. That number. So for every line item on the income statement, there is a standard. There is so for revenue, the standard is called international for a, a phrase 15. For, I'm just giving an example. For leases, example, if you have a lease and you're supposed to account for a lease, the standard that helps us to be able to account for it is called a phrase 16. If you go financial instruments, like accounts receivable, accounts payable, the standard that helps us to be able to understand how to record and recognize it is called um, a phrase nine. You know, so every line item on the balance sheet income has got a, a standard, a specific a phrase or IAS that tells us how we should account for them. Any questions so far? Does that make sense? Does that make sense or you're a bit confused? It doesn't make sense. Should I, should I repeat? Very important. It is the fundamental of your accounting knowledge. Okay, so the cost curriculum. What are we going to be studying? What are we going to be studying? So this is for FAC 260, 2601 and FAC 2602. What are we going to be studying? What does this course entail? This whole program, this whole model, what are we going to study? Because we need to know what we are going to study then. If we know what we are going to study, then we will be able to now to know, okay, then how do we achieve it? How do we go about, about it? Good. So, FSC 2601. FSC 2601 is a mod the model that releases or, or gives us some of the efforts, some of the um, international financial reporting standards, the frameworks that helps us to prepare financial statements, right? Or it, it, it has some of the IAS standards or framework that remember IFRS and IAS are the same. They are all standards or frameworks that helps us to be able to prepare financial statements, right? So sometimes it is, it is IAS, sometimes it is IFRS, it's the same. When you see them, it is just telling you that what? It is a standard or a framework that helps me to be able to prepare or to be able to account for a certain item in the balance sheet or in the income statement, right? So let's look at a, a few of them. For example, in preparing a uh, preparation of financial statement, for me to be able to know the format of a set of income statement, a set of balance sheet or statement of financial position, cash flow statement, or statement of change in equity, I need to know what is called IAS-1. So the IAS-1 is the standard that helps me to be able to know the structure of how a financial statement should look like. When I do my assessments, and I do my, um, my, 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 my assessment and, and my assignments, uh, assignments in, in this model, I will be required to prepare a, a financial statements. It could be a statement of financial position. It could be a statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income. It could be a statement of cash flows, or it could be a statement of change in equity. You will, not, you, will, you, will, you will not be marked correct if you don't follow the right standard that has been prescribed by IAS-1, which is the framework that, which is the standard that helps me to know how the format of a financial statement should look like. How does a, how must a balance sheet look like? How must an income statement look like? How must cash flow statement look like? How must, um, uh, 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 a um, statement of change in equity, how must it look like? So if I want to know how a um, balance sheet income statement or a cash flow should look like, I must go to what? I must go to the standard called IAS-1. When I read it and I understand it, it should explain to me exactly how a financial statement should look like, how a balance sheet should look like, how an income statement should look like, how a cash flow should look like. So, so that is it. Then remember in your balance sheet or your student financial position, 
you have inventory. You have inventory. The standard or the framework that helps me to be able to understand how to account for inventory, I need to go to what? IAS 2, International Accounting Standard 2, is the one that tells me to, or that guides me as to how to account for inventory, how to account for, for inventory. Without that standard, I will not be able to, to know how to account for inventory. When you go to that standard, the standard tells you when you acquire inventory, how should you record the transaction? When the, the, the inventory is finished, how should you account, account for it? When the inventory is being used up, how must you account for it? If I acquire the inventory not with cash, but with uh, a loan, how must I account for it? If the inventory is written down to net realizable value, how must I account for it? So it tells you everything about inventory. How do I, what, what and what and what and what and what do I need to, um, to take into account when I'm, I'm record, when I'm initially recording an inventory um, um, amount? Do I need to put, uh, include the, the import duty? Do I need to include that or must I exclude that? Must I include uh, foreign exchange transactions? Must I exclude it? So it tells you everything you must know for you to be able to what? To account for an inventory. And it's called what? IAS 2. Then we have other standards. IAS 10 which we, we will learn later as, as, as we go. I don't want to go into too much details. Then we have property plans and equipment. If I acquire property plans and equipment, it is a very big standard. It's called IAS 16. It is very big. It is very big because almost every company has got property plans and equipment. How do I account for them? How do I depreciate them? What are the methods of 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 the depreciation. How do I impair them? How do I revalue them? How do I everything regarding property plans and equipment? You will find it under what? International Accounting Standard 16. 16. So as we go as we go along, we will be going into detail into these standards. And we're gonna learn and we're gonna master it so much so that we can even close our eyes and just account for PPE, just like that. Because that is how they want us. You need to expect us to be able to know it at our, at our fingertips. You know everything about it. Impairment, you know it. Um, revaluation, PPE, you know it. Um, depreciation, you know it. Um, um, what? Everything. Everything about property plans and equipment. Good. Then we have provisions, contingent liabilities, and contingent assets. What are provisions? What is the difference between a provision and a liability? The standard that deals with provision is what? IAS 37. International accounting, uh, International accounting standard 37. We have investment properties. Uh, so investment properties are like okay, you have you have you have you have a company, but you, you you've also invested in other companies. Like maybe you're going to buy shares in Anglo Gold as a company, you're going to buy shares, or you have a property. The company has acquired a property that is renting out to people. It's called an investment property. How do I account for it? How do I bring it into my balance sheet? How do I account for it? What is an investment? Under what circumstances can I revalue it? So everything to do with investment property is under IS40, which we are going to master. You know, we're going to, to learn it. Then we have leases. It's IFRS 16. So now it's no longer IAS, but it's what? It's IFRS. Why? Because it's, it's a it's a it's a late, it's a it's a recent standard. It came just, just recently. I think it was in 2018 that this was released. It is very recent. That is why it's called international financial reporting standards. So the old ones are IAS, and then the latest ones are IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards 16. Financial instruments, we're going to learn about financial instruments. We will find out that accounts receivable, accounts payable, these are all financial instruments. How do we account for them? The standard that helps us is called IFRS 9, International Financial Reporting Standard 9. That is what helps us to be able to account for investment property. Then now the main one, revenue, revenue or sales. 
the standard that helps us to be able to delve into it, to understand it, to be able to account for it, is called Ephrase 15. Mm? The name Ephrase tells you that what is also what a, a, a new standard. Ephrase 16 came into effect, I think, in, in I think in 2019 or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. It's very very new. That's why it's called an Ephrase International Financial Reporting Standard 15. So we're going to learn. So I think. As far as this model is concerned, these are the ones that they want us to, to master. Then as we move on to, to maybe second year, I mean, to third year, and, and as we move up in our accounting, we, they start into these other ones. You know, there, there are so many standards that are there, so many other differences that, that are there, but these are the fundamentals. These are the basics. If you, if you get this, our accounting becomes easy. The other ones, not every, not every, some companies have it, some companies do, do, do not do not have it. But this one, almost every company that you go to, you have to apply these standards to account for them. Then for FSC 2602, so now many, many big companies, if you talk of your standard banks, your Anglos, your old mutual, net bank, all these big companies, they don't just have only one company, right? They've acquired other companies. You know, they call them subsidiaries. Some are associates, some are joint ventures. Now, how do you account, account for them? So FAC 2602 is all about what? Preparing consolidated financial statements. So that is all that um, this model is about. How do you prepare consolidated financial statements? How do you put them together? You know, if a company has got a subsidiary or an, an, an associate or a, a joint venture, how do you put them together? How do you how do you combine them to make one consolidated financial statement? So that is what consolidated financial statement is all about. You know, so that is what we 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 will we, 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 we'll be learning. So we learn about subsidiary. How do you approach a subsidiary? How do you study it? How do you how do you you know be able to to account for you delve? Um, much into it. Associate, what is the approach? You know, joint venture, because all these are different entities, you will have to be able to know them and to know how to account for them individually. Good. Now, how does one study accounting? How does one study accounting? Now we are getting to the, the cracks of the whole thing. Why I'm, I'm facilitating this, this module. How do you go about studying it so that you be you you, you will pass it? Mm? So there are techniques, and and this is what as a facilitator it is my it is my responsibility to make sure that you get the techniques right so that you be because many people fail account. It's not because it's not because they don't know. Believe me, they know. They know. They understand. They are even working in companies, and so they are doing the same thing. But they fail because what? of technique. You don't pass accounting because of knowledge. You pass it because of you know exam technique. You know how to study. You know how to write the exams. You know how to pass. You don't, you, there are certain things, certain knowledge that you need to know. It's not about the, the knowledge about the accounting itself, but how to pass the exams. What is the, what, is, what, are, what are the techniques? that I need for me to be able to, to, to pass them. How do I write them? How do I study it? How, do, when I see a question, what is the first thing I need to do? When I see a question, how do I frame it? You know, so this is, this is more important than even, for the knowledge you will get it, but how do I pass it? How do I finish? Or even if I don't finish, how do I make sure that I get a distinction? I get 90%. I'm able to do about 90% of the work. How do I make sure of that? So that is that is that is my work. So now that we've talked about the overview, then you understand what the objective of what you are getting yourself into. You understand the importance of actually studying studying accounting. You understand the the main standard or the framework that I need to be able to apply in order to be able to prepare the the the, 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 the financial statement. The main reason why you are attending this lecture is that what now you need to be able to know how do I pass it. I know it, I understand it. How do I ensure that I pass it? I'm able to finish. Believe me, many people don't finish. I'm able to, I'm gonna be able to help you to, 
to show you how we'll be able to get maximum max from this particular model. Good. So let's start. So the first thing that is so important is that what you must understand the principle. You must understand the principle. Very, very important. The difference between accounting and mathematics is mathematics is, oh, mathematics, someone will say, okay, I'm still mathematics. I know how it goes. I know how the methodology, if I'm doing calculus, for example, I know I need to do this, I need to do that, that, that. it's form some form of a uh, methodology, you know. Accounting, you need to understand principles. Principles. You go and see a question that was said last year, you think it's the same. It's not the same. If you don't understand the principle, something, some word will change the whole thing. So I, when I'm studying, I'm not studying to know how it was done last year. No, I'm studying to understand the principles. That is why it's very important that whatever you do understand, you get cl clarification from a lecturer, from a tutor, to make sure you understand. So that when you see it, when, when you see or they, they twist the question a little bit, you will still be able to uh, to pass it because accounting relies on principles not methods it is principle so you need to understand the principles the second thing is that you need to practice problems you need to practice this accounting is such that if you don't practice you will fail it doesn't matter how smart you are you need to practice certain things might become second nature to you if I practice, practice, and practice, if I'm if I'm I'm asked to prepare a statement of financial position or statement of, of, of profit and loss and other comprehensive income, I know the format. I know how it should go. I know what I'm account for it. I know the number of nine. I know the framework. I know the structure. And all comes what with practice. It comes with practice. That is all that it is. So I know principle. That is fine. You know the principle, but I need to practice. So someone who know who knows the practice, who knows the principle, might be able to pass, but might not be able to pass well because if you don't practice problems, you will not be able to finish. It may be difficult for you, even though I, you know the principle. So you need to to practice problems. You must you must stay organized. There is a way that things must be done. There is a way that the exam must be written. The assignment, there is the way, there's a format. You need to stay organized. You must start with the whenever you, you get a question or you are you are studying, you can't just go and start practicing um last year exam. No, it doesn't work like that. You first get the principles. After the principles, you start with the basics, the basic examples, which are in the tutorial letter. And what are the basic examples? The basic example helps you to be able to understand the principle. So normally there's an MCQ, there's, there's an, a, a multiple choice. Well, let's start with a multiple choice. Once you're able to get about eight or seven over tens, oh, then I know I have got the basic understanding is there. Then I can go and tackle, not the, the major question, but the smaller questions. Also testing what my understanding and the principles, right? So we start with the basics. Then you can now start tackling the financial uh, 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 statements. Initially, you do the financial statements. You don't. I don't expect you to just go and prepare. Just learn from them. So you do the financial statement. You are you are you are you are applying the principle. So don't, so just do it, and then you will compare your answers to. The, the, the you compare your own answers to to the to solutions then you find out where did you go wrong where did you go wrong as to find out where, where you went wrong you're actually learning so once you have mastered the 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 the, the, the principles to learning then you can now come in what to sit and 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 start practice under examination conditions so if the exam says a question would a question will be set for 45 minutes. You need to be able to make sure that there's a time will come where you actually are able to sit down and practice writing it for 45 min minutes without being interrupted. As if you are writing the exams. If you don't do that, you are going to struggle. But that is that is my role. That, that is what I'm here for. So I'm going to guide you. I'm going to help you. 
we're going to do exercises together. I'm going to help you. We're going to, we're going to look at a question and, and be able to tell you. I may not go into, because I'm, I'm a facilitator, so I may not go into the, 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 the detail, but my role is to be able to help you. If I've, if I've read this question, what is the first thing I need to do? What is the second thing I need to do? What do I highlight? When I'm reading, what must I pay attention to? What am I highlighting? I will not finish, finish, finish the paper, but do I, have I put enough facts for me to get 90%, 95%, or even 80%? Have I done that? So that is my role. That is Gordon. Role. Yes. Gordon. Yes. Since we started late one, you can take it up until half past eight. Oh, is it? Okay. All right. Yes. Cool. That's yes. fine. That's fine. I may, I'm, I may actually be able to finish before, before that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, 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 so that is what it, what, what, what it is. You know, um, financial statement, um, and and then, then practicing regularly. So that, that is my role. So what, so my is to help you. We look at a question. We look at, we, we read it. We start underlining the, the, the important uh, points. Then we will look at what am I look, looking for? How do I pass it? What is the strategy? What, what is the framework? That is what you need to pass. That is what you, you need to pass. And that is what we are going to be doing from now on until my time with you is finished. Exam technique, exam technique, exam technique all the time. Um, then as you like I said, as you are practicing the exam, the, 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 the question, you seek clarification. When it's something you don't understand, don't just brush over it and say, ah, it's fine. No, 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 it's not fine. Believe me, you must understand where it's coming from. At once, initially it may be difficult for you to grab, but once you're able to grasp it, ah, you say, ah, wow, it, so this wasn't even that difficult after all. You know, maybe how to calculate um, depreciation so you, you didn't get it when you were doing it but now ah, now you 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 understand it you're able to do it once you understand the principle it becomes so easy everything accounted is so i promise you there is nothing difficult all you need to do is that when you don't understand something seek clarification why why is this number 24 24 000? why is it giving me fifty thousand? i got seventy five thousand. the solution has fifty thousand. what did i do wrong then once you, you get it, ah, now, and that is where the learning takes place. So that is what we are going to be doing. Um, it is also very important to make use of resources. You know, you make use of your test books. Very, very important. Um, if there's a test book, uh, but I think for FAC 2601, there's, there are just tutorial, the tutorial letters, I think it's comprehensive enough. It's, 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 it's got everything. You don't have time to go to a test book and also to, to come back and use tutorial letters. So rather, use, use the tutorial letters. Tutorial letters explain everything. They break it down. They give you the basics. So you have you, you don't have any problem. You don't have any problem at all when you, when you use your tutorial letters. You do your assignments. You are asking for private. And start these things way in advance. Don't wait until the time is approaching. Then you are in a hurry trying to. No, 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 no. So you start early so that whatever you do understand, you know, you'll be able to, to, to get help. Start practicing early. Start getting the techniques early. Start whenever I teach a technique, go back and actually apply the techniques to make sure that you actually do, you, 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 you understand. You understand what it means. Uh, you practice ex exam questions. You practice them, and you and when you are practicing them, like I said, you first start with what? With the easy ones. You start with easy, then to easy just to get the principles straight. Then once the principles is done, then you 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 start practicing them. Don't don't rush. This time you just try to prepare the financial statement, do whatever, answer the question, then compare them to the solution. At this time you are not rushing. Then once you are, you find that now you are. You've understood the principles and you've done a few questions. Now, practice under examination conditions. If the paper says 45 minutes, you sit down. 45 minutes, uninterrupted. You do it. You stick to the time. Then you see that the first time you do it, 
you might not finish. You might you might actually end up just doing about 30% of the of the question. The second time you do it, you might end up doing 40% of the question. The third time you do it, you may end up doing about 70% of the question. The more you do it, the more the speed, your speed builds. The more you do it, the more the speed builds. You, you gain speed because now things have become second nature. Things that, you know what, it becomes second nature. And that is how people end up getting 95%, 90%. It's a very basic um, technique that you must follow. You know, you don't, for example, when you prepare a balance sheet or a file, you don't need to go and, calc and, and, and calculate and, and make sure that the balance sheet has balance. Who does that? Nobody does. You can't do that. But you you want to uh, you wanna cast to make sure it's balance. No, no, you are, you are going to fail. Because I'm telling you, if 3,000 people in UNISA sit for that exam, all the 3,000 people, everybody will get a different answer for the balance sheet. So why don't you just come suck a number, put it down, and then just move on? Because you, you, you won't get it right anyway. Because when there's some conditions, you, you must work at a top speed. Besides, the markets, we don't even mark the answer. We mark the, the format. We, because we know the answer, you won't get it right. You're wasting your time. But there, there's enough marks for you to be able to get even 100%, even over 100%. There's enough marks. Most of the time, we don't even get there. There is so many marks. So don't go custom to make sure the balance sheet has balanced or the income statement is perfect. You will never get it perfect. Never. So thumbs up a number and move on. That's how we do it. I'm just giving you one examination technique. Then you want also helps us also to join in study groups if possible. You know, a few friends of yours will just, you know, maybe four, five, five of you will decide to join so that you encourage each other, you motivate each other. It also helps. If it's possible, it helps a lot. You, you know, uh, make each, 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 um, each, each one should be accountable for, for one another. It has always helped, it has always helped, always helped. Yeah, so those is, that is what we are going to be going through every time we come look at it and say guys the questions right the technique what do i do what do i highlight which one what is important what is it the framework am i i'm done so after 45 minutes you will see you've got about 90 percent of the questions you put them there i'll help you to know how to cross reference you know very important because if you do an accounting question and you are not able to cross reference an examiner is not, is not obliged to give you any mark. You will learn that. What is the best way? What are the techniques? So that is what we are, we are going to be focusing on. Do you think it's, it's doable? Is it something that you can do? Of course you can do it because I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Any questions? Will you be able to practice under, exam, uh, under examination conditions? That is after you have done a number of, of, of them, will you be able to sit and say, you know, 30 minutes, just gonna do it, sweat it out. Even if I don't finish, it's fine. I'll just, the more I do it, the better I become. The more I do it, the better I become. So it doesn't matter if the first time I attempted it, I got 1%, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is that I'm, I'm learning. It's a, it's a learning. That is why it's important not to wait until the assignment is um, a due date, but regularly you, you do it. Any question? Does anything sound difficult? Is, is, it, is, it, is it too hard? Is it doable? Yeah. Who is speaking? Is that Audrey? Yes, sir. Yes. I think yes. you did explain it clearly. It's understandable on my side. Yeah, introduction to financial finance. So, so, so this is um, what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do groups, the technique to ha to handle groups, group statement or consolidated financial statements, the techniques to prepare. Um, company's own financial statement as well as 
um, the techniques to prepare consolidated financial statement. With the end goal is that what you are passing the assignment, you are passing the exams, you are understanding the exam, the exam the examination techniques, you are doing well under them. That is the most important thing. That is and how to pass, how to read the question, the especially the required. When you see a, the, the, the required, because in at, at UNISA, if you if the required is in a certain way and you don't write it according to the required. You are wrong. You will fail. So it is better we 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 take about five minutes just analyzing the required before we start planning. Some people will just start and then they just and then they, they fail. We we will take five minutes to analyze only the required. Once we've analyzed the required, we cannot go wrong. We've highlighted all the important things to to, to highlight. We've highlighted it. And, and we are going by a structure, a framework, and we can never be wrong. We can go wrong. So that is that, that is what we are we are going to be doing. So we're going to go through uh, financial statements. We're going to go to conceptual framework of financial reporting presentation as per IS one, inventory recognition IS two, property plans and equipment IS sixteen, investment property IS forty, leases if sixteen. Events after reporting period, IS 10, provisions, contingent, liability, and contingent asset, IS 37. And then we're going to look at consolidated financial statement for subsidiary, IS 20, 20, 27. Then I had to prepare an associate consolidated financial statement with associates, IS 28. We're going to look at FS3, which is um, business combinations. Yeah, so all these are standards that we are going to uh, to work at. All about what the examination. Remember, my role is not to go into the 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 the, the, the answer. My role is what more of the technique, the technique. How do I pass? How do I finish the exam? What do I look for? That is my role. Yeah, your other two tests will go into the accounting, go into the nitty gritty of the thing, but. I will, I, I, my, as a facilitator, my role is more to go into to that. It, it doesn't mean that I don't know. So if so, you have, if I, you have an issue, you can actually call me, and I will assist you as well. Uh, yeah. So business combinations, we will tackle that for FAC two six zero one. The techniques, um, accounting for subsidiary, accounting for an associate, accounting for a joint control. We will look at that and. Yeah, and we'll master it that we can even close our eyes and get 70% with our eyes closed because it's it's there, there's a way, there's a format as to how to be able to pass this. Um, how does one study accounting? We, we, we continue. So if you don't understand, a, I, I would just say that only if you don't understand a principle from the third letter, would you have to go to and use the prescribed textbook? But I mean, I have studied through UNISA before and I've, I did, I mean, I accounting my CTA to UNISA. And I mean, it's, they, they really explain, they really break it down and uh, to, to the level that you really would, would get to, to understand. The study guide is comprehensive enough to listen to, 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 to the lecture recordings and, and the podcast. Third letter 102 consists of past papers and solutions which you can use. But of course, you only start using the, the third letter 102 after you have what you've, you've understood the principle. You have practiced them uh, to make sure that you have a feel of how it goes. Uh, in the, uh, and, and then before you start, you know, um, sitting down and, 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 and going according to the time. Uh, the UNISA library is also there's so so many uh, resources. It is it's, it's, it's an o online library which you can get resources from um, to, to help you to assist you to be able to understand some principle. So it's all about principle. I can't. It's all about principle. Uh, as you you, are, you know, UNISA is it's not face to face like your your colleagues at UJ or, or at FITS. It's all online. You know, so you should be able to to adapt. You should be very adaptable. You should be able to 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 to, to, to adapt and be and, and, and be able to use your 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 lecturers, your facilitators, your tutors to your advantage. You know, send them um, meeting requests, send them emails, 
you know, let, let them clarify things. That would all help. Um, yeah, so a lot of interactions are, are happening online. So it's very important for you to be able to, to know how to interact online as well. Um, initially, when you start a, a principle, when, when we start a certain uh, standard like IS2, when you start, um, start with, 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 with the MCQ, you know, for you to get a feel um, of the, to try to get, try to get the understanding correctly. But once they understand the basics are right, the other things will, will follow. So try and do the, 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 the MCQ, just to evaluate your understanding of, of, the, of, of, of the module. View the po podcast and other lectures to get a concept. Do other online activities if you have the time. But with accounting, it's all about what? Consistency. It's all about consistency. We can do the practice. We can do the facilitation, the technique, but at the end of the day, you also need to go back in and practice and practice. Yeah. Uh, reach out to tutors and lecturers for support. And yeah, you are on to becoming um, a, a, a distinction student. Yeah, I think that is the end. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, study the theory of each learning unit, making sure you understand the principles. Once again, it's all about principle, principle, principles. Work through the illustrative examples. Very important. The illustrative examples are normally they are very short. You know, they are not exam standard questions, but they are short for you to teach the principles. Attempt the questions in the tutorial letters. Do the questions and compare solutions to yours. It's very important. Hmm? Compare it to yours. That's where the learning actually takes place. We will do all that. We will do all that. We will do all that. Every time we will practice how to do that. Analyze the solution to your answers to find out why it differs from yours. By repeatedly doing the question and the examination condition, you improve on your knowledge and most importantly, your speed. So the reason why we do them and the exam conditions is what? To improve on your on your speed. It's very important that you improve on your speed. Very, very, very important. Very, very important. So the more you practice, the more the speed, the speed will just come. The speed will just come. Um, then, okay, lots of exam tech, but these are just, you know, things I'm telling, but of course, we, 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 we will be doing them. So you will, you will get a hang of it. You, you, you will get to do it so much so that you will, it just becomes second nature, because that is why, why I'm here. You read the required session first, and remember no marks if you do not ans answer the question. So the required, you will use five minutes to analyze every required, making sure that we understand the required, we understand it well. Um, always remember to write down the layout and the framework. So once you read the required, and you've highlighted the required, then we do what? We will do a framework. Every question in account has got a framework. Every question in account. So as we, we read it, we're now doing our, our framework. So all now we have to do is what? To put the, the answers in the framework. In the framework. And that is how. By just doing the framework, the framework just guides you to be able to pass. Even if, even if you don't finish, you will still pass. You will still pass. Calculation might be cross-referenced, otherwise no marks are awarded. So I'll show you how to cross-reference, how to do calculations and cross-reference. If it's a simple calculation, we may do them inside the financial statement using a bracket. But if it's a complex calculation, then we will do it somewhere, but we need to cross-reference. Um, we, will, we, will, we, will, we will make sure that we attempt every question in the question paper. In accounting, if you leave out a whole question, you have already failed. You have failed. You cannot afford to leave out a question. Never, under no circumstances. So you, if you, you attempt a question, if the time is over, no matter what, you move on to the next question. It, no matter what, you must leave. If you, if you, if you, if you steal five minutes from this question and think that you're going to make up for that other question, you, you, you will lie to yourself. You will be failing, so you need to be able to discipline yourself. But I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to be able to, you know what, get enough marks on the this question that when you are moving on to your next question, you are you got the confidence that you got at least eighty percent or ninety percent correct. Um, 
I'll show you how to show calculation and how to show them properly so that your exam, exam, examiner will be able to follow. Um, also, handwriting is very important. You know, I know you are working very fast, but your handwriting has to be legible. And of course, keep to the time. Accounting is all about time. It's all about time. It's all about time. If you were given three hours to finish an income statement balance, you will do it. You will finish. You will balance it. But unfortunately, we don't do that in accounting. We will set the exam is always, the time is always way lower than the available, uh, than, than a question that we have asked you. So that's why examination technique is needed for you to be able to finish. Then my last thing I'll say that we, we don't, we, we never balance a financial statement. Never. Not in an exam. In real life, yes, but not in an exam. We never balance it. It's, we thumb suck a number, we put it there, we move on. Move on. Yeah. Uh, so this is just, I think, the, the assignment and the, in terms of the, the waiting, but we will we, we, we'll do that. We'll do that. Good. So what is the outcome of the model? At the end of this model, I expect you to have an in-depth understanding of the principles of preparing financial statement and group financial statement. That is what I, I expect from everyone um, to be able to prepare the, 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 the financial statement as well as what? So for those who are doing I, um, FAC 2601 to be able to prepare the, the, the financial statements and for those doing the groups to be able to prepare consolidated financial statements. That is the outcome. And it's going to be so easy. You will see. You see how easy it is. You see how easy it is. You should always come to an accounting lecture smiling because you know you've got this. It's easy. With the exam technique, it is easy. Uh, and then the other outcome that I want from this is that you will now you possess excellent examination technique to pass any assessment, any accounting assessment. And once you get the basics right, moving on to the other higher years, to the honors and, and levels, everything, because you have the foundation, everything else becomes easy. Everything else becomes easy. Cool. And I think that brings me to the end of today's lecture.